Hello, this is Danielle Hatcher with Danielle Hatcher Photography. Um, I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on how I use the HSL panel in Lightroom um, to tweak my skin tones and to get them the way that I like them. So I thought this was a fun image to do. This is actually my daughter. Um, this is an image we took in November and it was very dark outside. Um, I didn't realize how dark it was going to get so early, so <laughs> we ran outside to the park across the street at the last possible minute. I had this idea of doing fur around her cute little face, um, and this is actually the street light on in the background, so you, you can pretty much tell it was very dark, um, practically dark outside. My ISO was at 4000 for this one, so um, kind of a noisy series of images these were, but I actually really liked that. I felt like it went with the moody edits that I was trying to go with, so I went with it. Anyway, this is my straight out of camera. Um, <clears throat> I did want to straighten it. You can see uh, the jacket's not quite so straight, and I wanted to crop out the white lines. This is my jacket, so she's swimming in it. Obviously, it doesn't fit her shoulders. Um, so we're going to straighten it and crop out this part of her shirt here. Um, so that takes us to this. So now that we've got the crop the way that I want it, um, I'm just going to do my basic edits and show you um, how I start my edits. So well, first we want to adjust white balance. Um, the white balance is super off. I shot this in auto because it was almost dark and it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I didn't bother doing a custom white balance. Um, so we're going to bump the temp and then the tint was shot at minus 13, so I'm going to split the difference to like minus 5 or so. And we're going to do more edits in the HSL panel to get rid of some of the green um, that you can see in her hair. So, so 6,500 on the temp was the most important one, and then I just got rid of some of the green there. Okay, so now that the crop and the white balance are the way that I want, I'm going to start with a preset. This is a really popular preset of mine that I love to use. Um, this is a Visco preset, Kodak Portra 160 minus. So we're going to start with that. It looks very harsh at first, but we're going to tweak it and get it the way that I normally have it. So usually I have my own presets down here. You can see I've done my own. So here it is, Portra 160 minus tweaked. But I want to show you what those tweaks are just so that you know um, how I get to this final image. So again, this is just with the preset. Um, on all of my tweaks, I always like to remove the grain. Um, I don't like the added grain in Lightroom. And this is already really grainy, like I said, so I'm not too worried about that. I also like to do a little bit of a vignette on most of my images, so we're going to add that. Um, sometimes I might do noise reduction in Lightroom, but with this one, again, I'm kind of embracing the grain here, so we're going to leave it alone. I am going to reduce the sharpening. You can see that the sharpening does almost draw attention to the grain a little bit more than I would like, so we're going to drop it down and you can see um, a lot more fine in that preview box there. So HSL we'll come back to in a second. But with that done, then um, for anybody who has Visco knows that it comes with this awesome toolkit. I also like to fade my shadows quite a bit. So you can see what that did, a Faded Shadows Plus, was just bring up the left side of the tone curve here. Um, so you can do that manually or click a button, either one. And then it's really bright for me now, um, so we're going to drop exposure by half a stop. And then that brings us back to this moody, kind of nice, wintry feeling image. Um, so then that's my basic preset that I use on most of my images. Um, so just with one click, because I already have that all in the same preset, that's how it would look. But I just wanted to run that step by step for you guys today. You can hear my kids coughing in the other room. <laughs> They're supposed to be sleeping. Um, so we want to get rid of the smoothie on her face here really fast before we tweak her skin. So I might <clears throat> typically bring this into Photoshop and Photoshop this out, but just for time purposes, I'm just going to quickly go from spot to spot getting rid of these smoothie marks. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. Alright, so then we'll go back. Okay, 
So now for all intents and purposes, this image is done, but I do want to tweak her skin tone. So that's the purpose of this tutorial is the, tu the skin tones. Um, so to do that, we're going to use the HSL panel here on the right. We're going to start with luminance. Um, I kind of start over here with luminance and then work my way back. I do luminance, saturation, and then hue. Um, I always start with an orange, orange luminance bump to plus 20. Um, so you can see if I toggle back and forth, <clears throat> You can see that that really brightened her skin up quite a bit. Do you see how it's almost glowing now? Um, luminance is the perfect word to describe it. It brought some light into her skin. Um, but I do feel like it's very flat. Of course, the lighting is very flat. It was cloudy that day and the sun was gone. So uh, you can't really expect super dramatic lighting in these conditions. So it doesn't help that the lighting is very flat. But in addition, I feel like the color of her face is flat as well. So we're going to go over to saturation and actually add some orange saturation. We'll bump it to 20 as well. So do you see how now she's got so much more color in her face? I love that. So now I would consider her skin as glowing. Um, I'm also going to adjust the red saturation, saturation because I feel like it's still looking a little green. I only bumped the tint to minus five. I didn't go all the way to zero or even plus 10, which would normally be on a cloudy um, white balance setting. So it's still a little green. So I'm gonna take the red. You can see the preset moved it to minus 12. So I'm just gonna get rid of that and move it to zero. So now she's got this pink orange glow. I'm loving the difference so far. One more thing, we're gonna go over to hue. And you can see with hue, you can adjust the hue of each of these colors. So if you have never played with the HSL panel before, I really, really invite you to do it. It's a very powerful tool. Um, but so in the red hue, it goes from a magenta to like a orangey red color, like a burnt orange. And um, I want to make the reds less pink, more orange. So we're going to bump that to also 20. 20 is a popular number today. Okay, so, but I feel like that brought some green back. Um, remember, I bumped the saturation of the red to kind of counterbalance the green. I'm looking specifically right here in the shadows. Her hair is looking mighty green right here. Um, so to counterbalance that, you can see the yellow hue can vary from an orangey yellow to like a, a lime, a lime green. Um, so the preset had automatically bumped this over to plus 15. So we're already leaning towards the green side. So I'm just going to get rid of that and bring the yellow back down to zero. And then you can see the green is kind of gone. So this was before that. Uh, it's very slight, but it makes me much happier with especially this section. I don't know why my eye is drawn right there, but so this was before I did that yellow and this is after. So now her hair is a nice, true yellow, golden blonde. And then just for overall sake, here is before we started playing with the HSL panel. Again, kind of gray, kind of dull, and very flat. Um, and this was after the HSL panel. Much more life and vibrancy to her face. So... Um, here is the final before and after. Whoops. There we go. So that's the final before and after of her face, and I love it. So I hope that was helpful and that you guys learned something. And if you ever have any questions, you can feel free to email me. My email is below. Thanks.